Hello. In this Java tutorial, we are going to learn about interfaces. Before watching this tutorial, make sure you have a good general understanding of polymorphism. For more information on that topic, please click on the video link in the upper right hand corner of this screen. Some important facts to know. Interfaces allow programmers to set up a common interface for classes that will implement it. Traditionally, interfaces only allowed public, abstract methods. However, newer versions of Java, like 8 and 9, will allow a limited version of non-abstract methods. For the purpose of the AP Computer Science A exam, you don't need to know about those. Interfaces may contain fields, but they must be public, static, and final. They must also be immediately initialized. Interfaces may not contain constructors. A class may implement multiple interfaces. This is an advantage of an interface over an abstract class. A variable can be declared as an interface, but you can't create an instance of that interface. Let's look at these two examples we have here. A 1971 Oldsmobile 442 and a 2018 Tesla Model X. Electromechanically, these two cars are very different. However, they have a common interface to steer, accelerate, and decelerate. A driver doesn't need to know how they work on the inside as long as they know the interface. It's very similar for programmers who want to use classes that implement the same interfaces. They don't need to know how they work on the inside as long as they know how to work with them from the outside. Let's consider that last example and write a car interface. We start by declaring public interface car. Here we've added a field. Since all fields in an interface must be public, abstract, and final, the compiler assumes these and we don't have to say them explicitly. If you would prefer, you can say public, static, and final explicitly. Next, let's add some abstract methods. All non-static methods in an interface are assumed to be public and abstract, so we don't need to declare that explicitly. However, you can declare public and abstract explicitly if you'd like. Now let's take a look at a class that implements our car interface, public class Tesla X. Since concrete classes can't have abstract methods in them, we must override all the abstract methods in the interface so that they aren't inherited. Here we've overrode accelerate. It says electric motor engages because that's how a Tesla X accelerates. We've overridden the abstract method decelerate and has it output regenerative brakes engage because that's how a Tesla X decelerates. Finally, we've overrode the turn method and we say the wheels turn in the direction of our parameter direction. Let's look at the Oldsmobile 442 which also implements car. It accelerates very differently using the gas engine, however we have the same method definition here. Decelerate also behaves differently, but the interface forces us to have the same method decelerate. Turn is a little bit different, but again we have the same method turn and we take the same string parameter. Now let's look at the class AutoShow. We can assume that whoever programmed the class AutoShow wouldn't have had to know anything about how Tesla X and Oldsmobile 442 were written. They would have only had to be familiar with the interface. There might be hundreds of different models of car, and whoever writes AutoShow only needs to know how the interface works to actually interact with the classes that implement the interface. Here we declare car John's car equals new Tesla X. We declared the variable of the type of the interface and the object is an instance of the concrete class. The only downside to this is if there are methods that exist in Tesla X and there's not a version in car, we can't access those methods from John's car. 
Here, we declare a variable Oldsmobile442, Janice's car, equals new Oldsmobile442. So that way, even if there's methods that were added to Oldsmobile442 that were not in car, we can still access them from Janice's car, since a variable type is what determines what methods are available. Here we are calling accelerate from John's car, and we're calling turn from Janice's car. We don't need to know how it works internally, we just need to know what commands are available to us. Now let's look at a real programming example that uses interfaces. We have two different classes, ArrayList and LinkedList, that both create lists of data. They work differently internally, however they both implement the list interface, which means a programmer doesn't necessarily have to know how they work internally. Here we are using the add method that was overridden in both ArrayList and LinkedList. The command works exactly the same way because they both implement the list interface. Another command set again works the same way and we don't need to be concerned whether it's an array list or a linked list. For further reading on interfaces, please check out this website or go to Google and type in Interface, Java, Oracle and choose the first result. To see the next video in the curriculum, please click on the link in the lower left hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower right hand corner of the screen.